Hello, everybody. Good to see everybody made it back from New Jersey. Um, uh, looking forward to this week's game. As we all know, it's a, it's a big game, and uh, our guys are locked in and already looking forward to it, and should be a great week. Harlan, obviously the last four weeks haven't gone how you how you guys wanted. Uh, is there any – Michigan's a very good team. Is, that, is there anything to the rivalry that can help – refocus you guys and just, you know, try and get out of this funk with the challenge ahead? Well, um, you always are just trying to get better no matter what. A rivalry game or not, definitely you can, it can bring some more focus to it, though. And uh, we talked about having great attention to detail. And so, um, but far as, you know, if it's Michigan or not Michigan or what have you, we just need to start playing better. And now it's about finishing. So that's our next step. We got to finish, and we're looking forward to doing that this weekend. Uh, but with uh, you, you, Mark, obviously had a lot of success in this rivalry, and you were here for for all of those wins. I know he's more of an advisory role or consultant, but is there anything that he adds to this week because of the way he prioritizes this rivalry that that can maybe help you more than you know than just something unique? Right. Uh, because he has a secret formula to success, I can't share. So I'll just say it that way, if that's OK. Harlan, you're, a, you're an upbeat guy by nature. How hard has it been to stay that way? Because you have to be that way for your team, don't you? Absolutely, Fred. Um, I'm not going to lie. Saturday was a gut punch. That was a gut punch, like, oof. But you know, as a, as a man, as a leader, you know, you have to step up in those situations and try to just get understanding of what it's all about, the big picture, and then uh, relay it to the, to the young man. You know, I told them, hey, man, in life, adversity is going to hit. And that's when you find out who a person really is in the, in the midst of adversity. And so uh, I'm no different. So I have to step up and, and, and be the person I, I say that I am and, uh, and present that to them so they can have an example to possibly look to. Is it harder to bounce back from a game like that? Or in a strange way, can it help you bounce back because they're so hacked off of the way they gave it away? That's a great question. That's a great question. I think it can work either way. Um, I, we said the 24-hour rule, and sure enough, 24 hours, you got you, you to gotta get rid of it and let it go. And so um, I, I think it, it's just mentally how you, how you look at it and how you receive it and attack it. So um, for me personally, it's, it's, it's a, an it's a attack mode. You know, we lost four in a row, so now it's just attack mode. Just keep attacking. Eventually, you know, it's going to turn. And so that's, that's how I think. I'm wondering about the special team's mistakes the last couple weeks, couple games. Uh, what kind of things are you working to fix with that? And what did you see when you look back on the tape between uh, the, the end of the Iowa game uh, and then the two mistakes there in the fourth quarter? It's all about, the, like I said before to the guys, great attention to detail. Things that have been covered, you can't, you know. So I, I told our guys this, you know, shout out to my father, rest, in, rest his soul, but he used to have a bunch of sayings, right? A bunch of sayings. And uh, one he used to say all the time, I remember from, I was a little guy, but he used to say, when the crowd starts hollering and the lights get hot, that's when I want to know if you can do it or not. And so crunch time, when the game is on the line, can you perform and do what you're supposed to do? Attention to detail, discipline, do your job. You don't have to do anything extra. Doing your job is making a play. And so, um, when our guys get to that point, the offense, defense, and special teams, that's when we're going to be playing to the best of our potential, late in games, trying to finish them out. And you, you just, just, do it, just being disciplined. Because again, doing your job is making a play. Harlan, Michigan, obviously, a good team so far this year. They haven't played a schedule that maybe lets people know exactly who they are. But I'm wondering what you see when you watch them and what sort of challenges they present uh, compared to anybody else you face this year? They're, they're 
very disciplined uh, in, uh, in what they do, offense, defense, and special teams. Um, they play hard, um, and they, uh, like they have a, a good passing game as well as running game. They got a good balance, and uh, they just do a good job. They do a good job of coaching those guys up and putting them in position to make plays. A good football team. Harlan, from your time as a player to now, what has changed the most in this rivalry for you? What has changed the most? Um, I don't know if much has changed. So as a player, uh, didn't win as many did I, as I would like to have won, but as a coach, have won more. So that's changed, uh, the winning aspect from my personal uh, perspective, if I can say that. Harlan, obviously everybody remembers what happened after the game last year. I was wondering what you thought about where the team's at, and is that something you address going into this week with, with what happened and maybe keeping stuff on the field? That's, that's, that's it. We're focused on this year and, uh, and just playing the game 11 on 11 on the football field because that's all that matters, um, and, uh, and that's, that's where our, our focus is. 11 on 11 on the football field. You get plenty of chance to get out there and get after them and play hard and all the other stuff, you know, move, we're moving forward past that. Do you sense that this week has been different for your guys at all? Well, we just got back together today, this morning. So we had the practice, um, but already to say it, yes. You know, it's only been, you know, today, but yeah, they know what it is. They know what it's about and uh, the, very, the importance of this, this game to to us here at Michigan State. I guess kind of in what ways has it been different? You mentioned, you know, the 24-hour rule and turning the page quickly. Something like this, uh, do you think it has helped them to move forward? Yes, I think so. I think so, knowing that, hey, we got this team coming up, and, and, and I told them, let's be honest about it, they don't care that we, were, we're all, we lost the last four games. You know, they're going to come after us no matter what, right? And we would do the same thing, right? So we got to get ourselves together and, and move forward. So that's why the 24-hour rule was so important. Harlan, I don't want to goad you into saying anything and get you in trouble. <laughs> but Coach D made this rivalry personal. He called it personal. He revived the rivalry with his actions. And it's always been personal to you. Do you have to sell that all on your players, or do you bank on it being personal to them, too, if you know what I mean? I do know what you mean. So you, you go back to Coach Perlis. That's what I always go back to, because that was my head coach here, and how he talked about it and gave the history of it and all of that. So in today's world of transfer portal and all of that, and you, you're trying to get them to understand as well. You, you try to get them to understand because you don't really know until you play in it. And so you might even, even some guys you're trying to, hey, man, this is serious. This is big time. You know, it's, a, it's, it's the best rivalry in football, in my opinion. And so you, 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 you're trying to tell them. And, but they, sometimes they just don't know until they play. I've heard many guys say, even if it was freshmen, in, in, their, in their first uh, game against these guys, uh, say, oh, I see what you mean now. So sometimes it don't matter. You can say all you want throughout the week. It's not until afterwards sometimes, or once they get in it, do they really understand what you've been trying to tell them. That leads to me to ask you when it became personal for you. Was it when you played in it? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Coach Perlis, you know, I, I blame Coach, Coach Perlis. I always say that. Rest is so. But, uh, I blame, but uh, yeah, he, he, he got me fired up, that's all. And then I've been that way ever since, 1985, man. So it is what it is. Um, and so, I, and I always say this too, I think it's great for the state of Michigan. I, I really do, I really do. Because in this state, you grew up one way or the other. You know, so whenever I go out recruiting in the state, I say who you grew up rooting for. Because they, they're going to tell you one or the other. You're going to get one or the other. And, uh, and, and, and you kind of know where they stand. Most guys stand, but you always can ask that in this state. And like I said, it's great for the state. It really is. You're an Ohio guy. You didn't have any aversion to them until you came here, right? That is correct. That is correct. Because I, I was different. Some people may think, well, weren't you Ohio State? And then you didn't like them. 
I was more, I watched more pro ball. I ain't gonna even lie to you. Growing up, I much, I did watch college ball, but I wasn't into it like that. I was more of a pro football guy just watching them and just enjoyed watching college football. So it wasn't until I got here, like I said, and listening to Coach Perlis tell, you know, tell us about the rivalry and how it came about, the history, um, that's when I really, really got into it. With Caton, this will obviously be his first start against Michigan, his first time starting at Spartan Stadium under the lights. What makes him ready for this moment against Michigan? Well, he's a, he's a college football player. Um, he understands what he was signing up for when he signed a scholarship. And, uh, and this, and this, re this is the, one of the reasons why he chose to come to Michigan State is to play in games like this. Uh, he came from a big-time high school program out there in California at Bosco. And so he's – I mean, not that Bosco is playing this type of game, but he's used to big-time atmospheres and, and high expectations. So expecting him to do and, and have a great game. Harlan, when you, when you look at their run game, it seems like they do some things that you just don't see a ton anymore and with how fiscal they are and their style. What are the keys that you see that, that makes that thing work for them uh, uh, with their run game? Uh, their, their discipline and how they uh, attack everything they do. So they know, you know, each, you can tell the offensive line is in sync along with the tight ends and, and the running back. Everybody's in sync and understanding uh, their assignments. And so that's what they do good. Sort of flipping around defensively, they've only allowed 10 points once, and every other game I think was single digits. So, what are you noticing that they're doing well on that side? Same type of thing. They're disciplined in what they do. They understand where they fit and where they need to be in their assignments. So, uh, that's what that's what good teams do. You said you don't know until you're in it. Um, whether it's coaching in this rivalry or playing in this rivalry, do you have one specific memory? That kind of defines it again other than that like oh this is what it is but do you have a game win or loss or anything that you're like okay this is what it's about minus 48 yards rushing <laughs> simple thank you <laughs> you're welcome uh, i'm wondering looking back at the rutgers game uh kind of two things on either side of the ball one um khalil majid coming in for malik and i saw malik came back late but what's the situation there? Was that a place performance issue or was it injury? Malik got a little dinged up, mm -hmm. but like you said, you saw him come back in. So he, he's good. He's ready okay. to go. But that, it was more that he got okay. a little dinged and make sure he was okay. Okay. And, and secondly, two receiver fumbles, uh, the one play to Malik um, Carr uh, that he had it stripped from him. Uh, with that, I mean, you mentioned the attention to details. How do you work with that with the receivers? And was with that play with Carr, was there a thought to challenge that? Uh, no, I, you clearly saw the guy made a good play. I was standing literally right there. I mean, it was a kept boom, and he, and he swatted it out. What well, we say, hook and swat as defensive backs. And that boom, boom, and he got it out. I, mean, I saw it. I saw it right there, then and there. Um, but we got to continue. We've been talking about the turnovers and penalties and things like that, and the penalties were down this week. And uh, we got to continue to work on getting the turnovers. We have to just secure the ball, you know, the best we can. I, I even talked about, you know, getting two hands on it some kind of way as soon as you catch it and tuck it away quick and put two hands up there, no matter whatever you have to do to secure the ball. So we're working on it. Our offensive staff is a heck of a staff, and, and they're going to keep working on it and getting our guys to where they can hold on to the ball once they have it. I was wondering about the, the backfield rotation. Uh, we saw more of Jalen on, on Saturday. He looked like he's getting healthier. Is, is he almost 100%? And, and I guess is Harold Joyner now just like the permanent third running back after, or third on the depth chart and more pass pro than after bouncing around all those positions? Yes, uh, yes to, your, to that uh, question um, on, uh, on everything that you said. Jalen Berger, I thought, looked really good out there on, um, on Saturday. He's from Jersey, so he probably had a little extra juice, but he, he looked good. I thought he looked good. Uh, of course, uh, Nathan Carter is a heck of a back in being able to use uh, Harold uh, Joyner out there. He does a good job. He understands, had a nice little run. Um, so that's a good complement of backs, I think, that we have right now, and uh, they do a good job. Hey, Harlan, um, just going back to the Rutgers game, the players after the game, you've watched the film now, but the players after the game, I think all of them said, made a point that Rutgers played hard till the end. They didn't come out and say that maybe you guys didn't play as hard or you guys didn't play hard, but I'm curious what you saw, if you saw any, any give on your guys' part when things started going south there at the end. 
I'm not gonna necessarily say give, it was, it was the discipline thing I'd mentioned earlier. You know, uh, just, just doing what you're doing your job, doing your job. So, sometimes when things start going awry, guys will feel like, not only do I have to do my job, I gotta do something else to go make a play. Again, doing your job is making a play. Being disciplined is making a play. And that's what we have to do. Uh, in some areas on, our, on the field, we have a lot of young guys haven't been in real tight situations like that. So we're, we're learning and growing at the same time. And, uh, and hopefully we're, we're getting these lessons as we go through them. Uh, the the pregame availability report had some new guys on it uh, ahead of that game. I'm just, we didn't get a chance to ask him. Just wondering, is there anybody else that's a voluntary opt out or anything, or are those all injury situations if they're on that list? Injury situations, yep. No uh, no opt out situations uh, as of today, this morning, or anything that I've heard. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, you kind of touched on Michigan's offense, but. You know, they had changes, you know, all phases of the game from last time you played them, but, you know, same quarterback, same top two running backs. I guess, what do you, what, how much different do you think they are now than when you played them there last year? Well, they're just more experienced. They got those same guys, but they're more experienced. Of course, they got another year under their belt, and they're playing like that. They understand the offense and, and like I said, their assignments and where they need to be. And so they're playing like a more experienced group, if that makes sense. All right, cool. Thank you. All right, thanks, guys.